Good afternoon. This is Celia Lacayo with LA Social Science. I am the Associate Director of Community Engagement and I also teach in the Chicano Central American Studies and African American Studies Department. Today we will resume our amazing book series and we're very lucky today to have uh, Patricia Turner with us who is a professor in World Arts and Culture and the African American Studies Department. She's also the director of the Arthur Ashe Legacy Project and we're going to be talking about her exciting book entitled Trash Talk, Anti-Obama Lore and Race in the 21st Century. Um, hi, Patricia. How are you today? I'm fine, Celia. Nice to be here. Well, let's get underway. Um, so tell us, what is the, the main argument and the contribution um, of your book? Yeah, Trash Talk demonstrates that from the emergence of Barack Obama in 2004 until now, there's been an ongoing, um, an ongoing avalanche, really, quasi-invisible avalanche of, of rumors, legends, and conspiracy theories intended to undermine his integrity, undermine his presidential aspirations originally, undermine his presidency, and now to, um, to contradict any, uh, achievements he would want to have as in his post-presidency years. Absolutely. Um, so please describe uh, this anti-Obama lore um, you speak of and the, tell us why it's important. So I focus in Trash Talk on rumors, legends, and conspiracy theories. So these are, it's largely verbal, although there are many times that memes accompany a narrative text uh, about the materials. And the ones that focus on Barack and Michelle Obama tend to focus initially on their identities. So every aspect of Barack's identity has been challenged. His faith. Um, he is a Christian, but one of the first to emerge alleged that he was a Muslim. He, he loves his country. He wanted to serve it in political office. And one of the next ones argued that he was unpatriotic, that he wouldn't salute the flag, that he wouldn't wear a flag pin, that he wouldn't uh, say the Pledge of Allegiance. After he was president, the anti-patriotism ones went so far as to say that he refused to sign Eagle Scout certificates for Boy Scouts, which the president customarily does, uh, and that he um, looked for opportunities to personally denigrate and chastise members of the American military, and even had genocidal aspirations for them. Other aspects of his identity, his sexual orientation. Um, he's a heterosexual, still married to the first woman he ever married kind of guy. But there's a whole um, there's a whole corpus of beliefs we call Bathhouse Barry that alleged that during his bachelorhood in Chicago he frequented gay bathhouses so much that he had a nickname, and that once he aspired to the presidency he started a process of of killing or eliminating any men who could testify to his true sexual orientation. So um, he's an American citizen, and probably the one that I hear the most when people think they know what I'm writing about is, oh, you mean that he wasn't born in the United States. But his very identity as a citizen of the United States is probably what's most familiar to, to uh, listeners. But if you think about what our identities are, that's the full package. Absolutely. Um, so given your early documentation of anti-Obama lore, um, did you ever think his presidency would constitute a post-racial America? I did not. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, many, I don't know of very many of my colleagues in, in African American studies or very many students of the African American experience in the United States ever had that hope to any great degree. We, we might have had the hope, but our training and our personal experience 
gave us so many examples of other periods in American history when we thought that a corner, or people thought a corner had been turned, and it really hadn't. You can go back to Reconstruction. You know, there were African Americans elected to Congress within a few years of the Civil War, but that was followed by an enormous um, outbreak of white supremacist activity. Similarly, um, blacks getting involved in World Wars I and World Wars II. The implicit and explicit promise really made uh, in those years was that, oh, if you just show yourselves to be patriotic and you perform admirably for your country in these great wars when you come back, segregation will just magically evaporate and everything will be nice and wonderful. We know that didn't happen. The civil rights movement was, you know, the next sort of sequential one where people said, look at the legislation that's passed. Look at the Supreme Court cases in which you have prevailed. Surely we're 100 years beyond slavery. All of these things will be over. And then we get the really rabid anti-affirmative action uh, uh, years and everything that accompanied that. So I think those of us who study African American history are really accustomed to these cycles. We're really accustomed to, to backlash after um, progress is affected. It's very clear that these narratives that you capture and expose in the book are really important. Why should uh, social scientists and other academics take into account this kind of folklore um, that you document in the book? You no, know, I think that it's very much about power. And the more you know about what's going on, the more you can strategize, the more you can tr attempt to neutralize, the more you can organize in order, to, um, in order to combat it. I said a few minutes ago that it's quasi-invisible, and I think that that's because um, in order to find it, I have to go to websites most people don't want to go to. Um, I have to confront conversations on the person who reads every last comment after one of those stories about the Obamas in the in the comments section, uh, and and it's 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 a sobering experience to do that, but the patterns are so clear, and those who are committed to social justice and to the empowerment of African Americans, then you need to know what you're up against, and so by Studying this material, that's the first step towards being able to do something about it. Absolutely. And along those very lines, um, how does this continue? How does this work continue to help us in the contemporary uh, sense to uh, fight racism? And, you know, why is this clearly a very critical book that we should all be racing um, to get and also as academics making sure that it's on our syllabus? Well, Celia, I, I took um, great pains to make it, and one of the nicest compliments I've been getting about it is that it's very readable. I leave a lot of the academic jargon that we as faculty use when we talk each other to each other behind so that uh, students who are, are inter interns in the political realm, journalists, individuals who may not know the, the minutia that we uh, uh, can go to sometimes, can have a very clear path from 2004 to the present. There are lots of examples that are in there. There are um, a list of conspiracy theory indicators. So what are the forces that are you can use to identify what will trigger the emergence of a conspiracy theory? Um, I give a lot of attention to the best sources for, for fact checking and, and those uh, entities that do the best job of, of getting that right. And I think that since the, you know, since I finished the book and turned it over to the publishers and, you know, no longer could, could add anything to it, 
the lore hasn't stopped. Um, I can go online. I can go online this week and find references to Michelle Obama being born a man and having had a sex change operation and having killed Joan Rivers. I mean, if I, I can take you to YouTube this week and show you that this week that's been referenced. So this is very current because the Obamas are out of the White House does not mean that they are out of the imaginations of the far right and those who want to capitalize on the far right. Because one of the things we haven't talked about is that all along there have been um, forces, individuals, and, and, and even nations, because a lot of these things do come from Russian bots that are intended, you know, their goal is to turn Americans against each other. So all of that's contained within within the within the book and the the relevancy i think is quite potent very clearly and we are so uh fortunate to have you today to very much lay it out for us so you should definitely get this copy now it is com very relevant to politics and society at a global level as well patricia we thank you for your time again my name is celia lacayo and please when you want cutting edge research um, LA Social Science is the place to go. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.